Hello and welcome to this lesson on fractions, decimals and percentages. By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to answer exam questions that ask you to convert between fractions, percentages and decimals. So stay tuned. Alright, so what do we know so far? Let's quickly do a recap. Uh, we know that fractions are written with a numerator and a denominator, so something over something or something out of something. We know that percentages are written with this percentage sign and we know that decimals um, have um, decimal place values. So it might be something like 0 point something 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 like 135 for example. Okay, so these are the three different things that we are going to be working with, right? So let's have a look at this first question here. It says look at this diagram and part A, what fraction is shaded? And part B, what percentage is shaded? Now percentages can always be obtained by multiplying by 100. So if you've got a fraction, you can multiply it by 100 to find its percentage. If you've got a decimal, you can multiply it by 100 to find its percentage. So let's go back to this question, what fraction is shaded? Right, so this is asking us for a fraction, so something out of something. Now, our denominator will be the total number. So let's just give that a count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So our denominator will be 9, and how many parts are shaded? Hopefully you can see the, on the camera which parts are shaded. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 out of 9 parts are shaded. We can simplify this, but this is not a lesson that, or, or a question that's asking us to simplify. So we can leave our answer for part A as 6 over 9. Part B, what percentage is shaded? We know that it's 6 over 9, the fraction, so therefore we can just do 6 over 9 and then multiply that by 100% and that will give us our percentage. So if we grab our calculators, so on our calculators, it gives us the answer. You might need to press S to D, okay, because uh, it gives you a bigger fraction. So if you press S to D, it will give you 66.6 .6 recurring. This means that 6 continues. And therefore, you can round this up. You can round it up to 67%. Or you can round it up to 66.7%, okay? But 67% is good enough. So, 6 out of 9 is equivalent to 67%. And that's how we've converted 6 over 9 into a percentage. Now, this question doesn't ask you to, but I will do this anyway because it's quite straightforward. What about the decimal? Well, the decimal forms can be easily worked out from the percentage. If it's 67%, therefore the decimal point we would divide by 67 by 100. So 67 divided by 100 is 0 0.67. And 0 0.67 is the decimal for 6 over 9, the fraction. So in the previous example, I did that decimal one for you. And, and this is how easy it is to find the decimal form from percentages. So for example, 40% is the equivalent of 0 0.4. We divide by 100, we get 0 0.4. 20% divided by 100, 0 0.2. 60% is 0 0.6. 80 percent 0.8. 100% is always out of one, and 0% is always zero. Right, I'll give you a few more. So for example, what about 65%? What's 65% as a decimal? You divide by 100, 0 0.65. So what about 25% as a decimal? Divide by 100, 0 0.2. To five. Okay. Now you're asked. To, it says fill in the missing decimals in the gaps below. The first one is done for you. So 40% is the same as 0 0.4. What's 90% the same as? You should write 0 0.9. 7% now. Okay. Divide by 100. So 7% is the same as 0 0.07. I'll give you one more similar to that one. What about 5%? What would 5% be? You should say 0 0.0. Five, because we're dividing by 100. With that being done, I want to give one that's not on here um, for you guys at home. So when I write this down, write it down and then work it out yourself. So something like 2.3%. What would this be as a decimal? Hopefully you had time to do it. You divide by 100 and this would be equal to 0 0.02. That's where if it was just 2%, that's where the 2 would be. And that 3, you just add it to the side. So 2.3% is 0.023 as a decimal. Now all of these questions that we've done, we can also convert them into fractions. Previously, like here, we had 80% is equal to 0 0.8. Well as a fraction, we can just write 80 over 100. And we can also write this one as 
because uh, there's uh, one decimal place, we'll write 8 over 10, because the 8 is in the 10th position. So likewise, if we look at this too, so this one as a fraction, we can either use this and write 60 over 100, or we can use this one and write 6 over 10. Now you may be wondering, thinking, hold on a minute, these are not the same fractions. Well, they are equivalent fractions. And please refer to the video that I've done on the introduction of fractions where you can see um, what equivalent fractions are. They are the same. To, for example, to go from 80 to 100, you just divide by 10 and then you get your 8 over 10. To go from 60 to 100, you also divide by 10. Now, what about the others? 0 0.2. What would 0 0.2 be as a fraction? You could either write 2 out of 10 or you could write 20 over 100. So you can see it's very, very simple to convert in between um, decimals, percentages, and fractions. Now that we've looked at the most basic types of conversions between decimals, percentages, and fractions, uh, you need to be more prepared for answering questions in wordy form because that's what the exams will expect you to do. So here, let's have a read of this. Ken and Steve are in a long uh, jump competition. Ken jumps one and one fifth meters. Steve jumps 1.5 meters. Who jumps further, Ken or Steve? How much further does he jump? Give your answer in meters. Now, you'll notice, first of all, that Ken's um, meters, however many meters he jumped, is given as a mixed number, whereas Steve, his one is given in decimals, okay? So what we can do is convert this one and one fifth into decimals as well. So let's do that over here. Now, the one, we can just write one point something, okay? And this fraction will be written here in its decimal form. One over five, if, if, I mean, you shouldn't really need to use a calculator, but one over five is 0 0.2. So therefore this will become one and then 0.2. So the zero would be here, but obviously we're adding the one to it as well, which gives us 1.2. So one and one fifth is 1.2 meters. And Steve, he jumps 1.5 meters. So who jumps further? That's the question. You can see that Steve jumps 1.5 meters, so therefore Steve is the one who jumps further. By how much? How much further does he jump? Well, you look at the difference between these two. So you can just do 1.5 minus 1.2, but again, you don't need to use this method to do this because you can work it out in your head. You can just take away the tenth places. So five take away two is three, so therefore, and one take away one is zero, but you could just write 0 0.3. Okay, you don't really need to use this method, you can actually work it out. So he jumps further by 0 0.3 meters. Let's have a look at this next question. Write the missing decimal so that each pair adds to one. So we've got a fraction here of a half, and we want to add something here to give us one. Okay, now it tells us that it specifically wants a decimal place in here, so a decimal value in here. All right, so first of all, let's think of the fraction that needs to go in here. A half plus what? What other fraction gives us one? Well, we know that one is made up of two halves. So therefore, a half and a half would make one. But what is a half represented as a decimal? A half as a decimal is equal to 0 0.5. Okay, so therefore, 0 0.5 will go here. Why don't you fill in the rest of those and then um, press play again when you are ready. All right, so... Let's have a look at this one, 2 over 5. So we know 2 over 5 here, plus the rest of it to make 1. Now we need the rest of it. It's a numerator that you need to focus on, okay? So you need to add 3 over 5 to give you 1. But what is 3 over 5 as a decimal? Well, earlier on, we saw that 1 over 5 is equal to 0 0.2. So therefore, 3 over 5 will be 3 lots of 0 0.2. 3 lots of 0 0.2 is 0 0.6. So therefore, we can write down in here 0 0.6 because 0 0.6 is the same as 3 over 5. On to that last one, 9 over 10. So we know that we need to add 1 over 10 into 9 over 10. And what is 1 over 10 as a decimal? 1 over 10 as a decimal is 0 0.1. So therefore, 0 0.1 will go in here, giving us, when you add them up, 1. All right, now the last question, you know, this is what the exam questions uh, build you towards, okay, by being able to answer questions like this. So it says, write these values in order, starting with the smallest. 0 0.5, 1 over 5, 5%. Try yourselves first, of course, and then press play again when you are ready. All right, so you're back. 
Um, let's have a look at this now. What do we do? Um, 0 0.5, we've got it as a decimal, no problem. We've got 1 over 5 as a fraction and we've got 5% as our percentage. We need to find a common ground between all of them. So we either convert all of them into decimals or we convert all of them into fractions or we convert all of them into percentages. Whichever way, whichever way you want to do it, that's totally up to you, okay? Um, I think it's easier to convert into decimals, but that's just me. You might find a, be a better way, uh, something that you, you know, feel more comfortable with, whether that be percentage or fractions, that's fine, okay? So that's already a decimal. This, as a decimal, is 0 0.2. We've been doing a lot of 1 over 5s and 0 0.2s in this lesson, but what do we do, huh? So that's that done, and this, what will that be written as, as a decimal? 0 0.05. So now, we can just look at the list and say which is the smallest, which is the biggest. Now, if you want further help with doing this, what you can do is put them in order using your place values. So for example, you've got 0 0.5 here, you've got 0 0.2 there, and you've got 0 0.05 there, okay? Now, all of these are zero, so obviously we can't distinguish or differentiate between those. But here in the 10th place, we've got a zero there. So that means that this number here is smaller than those two. And it says starting with the smallest. So the smallest value here would be 5%. So we can write that down, okay? So that's done, that's taken care of. Now out of these two, what's smaller? 0 0.2 is smaller. And 0 0.2 is one out of five. So we'll write one out of five next. And we don't need to really do the other one. We don't need to check anything. It's just the rest of it, isn't it? So 0 0.5. And there we have it, the list in order. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope you can now convert between decimals, percentages, and fractions and answer exam questions like the one we've just seen here on the board. I'll see you in the next lesson.